Well, in my opinion, Jesus, which is a, real, his real name is Yeshua, uh, is actually either Thoth himself that found a way to come back through a womb, because this guy does some really experimental stuff with transferring his mind into other bodies, or Jesus, Yeshua, was an actual uh, adept initiate of the ancient Egyptian mystery schools, uh, which if you read a, a, a little known gospel called the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, which was kept out of the canonized Bible, it talks about where Yeshua disappeared to at the age of 12. Mm. He actually went to Egypt to study the Egyptian mysteries. Then he went to Tibet to learn Qigong and Reiki. And then he went to India to learn the mystic arts. And he taught reincarnation all the way back down into Egypt. And then the Bible picks up where it says, I called my son out of Egypt. And now he shows up riding on the back of a donkey in Jerusalem again uh, at the age of 32, I believe. <laughs> Welcome to Far Out with Faust, everybody. I am Faust Chicho, and today I am excited and delighted to be joined by the one and only Billy Carson. Let me tell you about Billy and what he's been up to. And most of you have already heard a lot about him. Billy is the founder and CEO of Forbidden Knowledge Incorporated. He's the best-selling author of the Compendium of the Emerald Tablets. Fantastic book, which I just finished reading. Also, another book, Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. Uh, he's the winner of the 2022 Stellar Citizens Award, and he's the founder and CEO of Forbidden Knowledge TV, and that's a, a conscious scream, streaming TV network, which I'm also a subscriber and fan of, and you guys can check that out on the internet, download the app and pretty much anywhere where they're available. Billy earned a certificate of science with an emphasis on neuroscience at MIT, and he has a certificate in ancient civilization from Harvard University. Along with being featured in dozens of shows all across one of my favorite other networks, Gaia, and a bunch of mainstream shows as well, which I'm sure you've all heard of. He's also the CEO of First Class Space Agency, which is based in Fort Lauderdale. And specifically, this space agency is focused on the research and development of alternative propulsion systems and zero point energy devices. He is uh, a, a jack of all trades, this guy. I'm so excited to have him on the show. I've been waiting so long to, to talk to him. Billy, thank you so much for beaming in. Thank you for having me on. And uh, it's been a long time. I think it's been probably a year since I saw you last. I think it was a year. I was trying to figure yeah. it out. That's yeah. right. Because it was the, um, the, 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 the TCCHE. Uh, right. Which, yeah. And I met you and Elizabeth. That's right. Yeah. Man. So when I heard your story, so I've, I've been a fan for years, Billy. And, but, but I had no idea that you came from, from, from such a background. I had a sense of it, you know, when I first saw you and I, I remember looking in your eyes and I was like, this is a man who's overcome a lot, but I had no right. idea the, the depth to which you came from. And I, I would love for you just to, to speak on it briefly, because I don't think most people realize what you right. overcame to get to where you are. Oh, yes, a lot. <laughs> to, 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 to summarize it in, in a way, um, I came from very, very meager means, meager beginnings. Um, we Originally, I was born in New York in Queens General Hospital, lived in New York and Queens, Cambria Heights, Queens for the first six years of my life. Uh, and my father, unfortunately, he just couldn't get off of the drugs and alcohol. And my mother and father thought it would be a good idea to come to... <laughs> To Miami mm. to try to get a fresh start. Unfortunately, Miami was, uh, you know, the area of the cocaine cowboys and the crack cocaine epidemic and, and, and drugs and alcohol ran rampant through Miami. So we didn't he didn't get away from it. No, he so, moved right to the center of it. My God. Oh, man. I mean, he went right dove, dove right into the heart of it. all. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, no. And, uh, you know, so we moved there in 1977. Uh, and, you know, we would literally just get food from the church or neighbors would give us food. If we didn't have anything from them, we would literally have Cairo syrup and toast. I remember, you know, eating a lots of dry matzo crackers. You know, sometimes you put milk uh, in uh, milk on matzo crackers. You, you break them up and you're like, that's your cereal, you know, mm -hmm. just various ways, man, just trying to survive. Uh, so it was pretty, pretty bad. Uh, holes in my shoes, holes, rips in my crotches of my pants. You know, only two pairs of pants. I would I would bleach my pants and dye them different colors so that the kids would know that I only had two pair because they would beat you up in school. <laughs> right. You actually can get beat up Any for being excuse. poor. <laughs> it's just crazy. So I had to play in that matrix a little bit. You know, but I, I fortunately for me, I was able to figure out one day 
that if I can just take some type of action and I sold my toys door to door asking for donations, a penny, a nickel, a dollar, whatever. And I raise enough money that day so I can go to the ice cream truck and feel like a normal kid and buy some bazooka bubble gum, which is really my favorite thing to do is read the little comic strip in there. Mm -hmm. And I just get, got tired of seeing all my friends going to the ice cream truck all the time. And and that but that set something off of me. That day is when what, what, literally when my life went in a totally different direction because I realized that nobody was coming to save me, that I was going to be the one to save myself, that my own thought back my, by my own action actually changed my reality. And I, after that day, I actually knew, I said to myself out loud, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to get out of here. And my mother saw me staring out the window and she said, what's wrong? And I said, I don't belong here. You know, and mm -hmm. I made it my lifelong mission to get out of that environment and to never go back. And, uh, you know, fast forwarding to when I was 12, I was selling newspaper subscriptions for the Miami news, saved my money from that eventually invested in digital car stereos when they first came out. I would buy lots of them from Galaxy Electronics on COD, cash on delivery, mm -hmm. sell them to upperclassmen. Within, within a year, I was making more than my parents. I had a booming electronics company, car stereos, EQ boosters, amps, subwoofers, six by nines. You were works. in the right place for it, too. <laughs> I was in the right place, right in Miami. <laughs> Boom city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I even got a guy eventually to leave the local um, audio shop where he was doing installations to come work for me in my front yard and paid wow. him more. And he had less hours, but he, but he got paid more money still. And he got great tips. Uh, and then from there, I just focused on, you know, business. And eventually uh, I ran two companies, still graduated from high school, lived on my own since I was 16, you know, moved out, had two cars, the whole thing. Uh, but I just kept building and building and building from that point. And I've had some ups and downs along the way. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I've had way more wins than losses. And I don't I never see them as losses. I always see the L as a learn. How can I mm -hmm. learn from this and become better when this type of situation occurs the next time? Well, how can I prethink this and, you know, think ahead and make the adjustments now before something like that happens? Because a genius, really, he eliminates problems before they even happen. And so I just became better and better at it and um, studying and researching into financial literacy all on my own, spending countless hours in libraries and bookstores, researching, buying, buying, you know, the, those uh, those DVDs, you know, back in the day oh, yeah. that had information on them about financial literacy and investments and real estate and everything. I spent thousands on myself, on my own knowledge mm -hmm. to get to the point where I am today. And, you know, fortunately, it's, it's all worked out. I've become sort of a business magnate. I've mm -hmm. built, you know, multi-million dollar companies. And right now the company that I'm running, Forbidden Knowledge Inc., is its own streaming TV network. And it's also mm -hmm. a conglomerate of book publishing and, and content creation and, and everything right. else. Uh, and uh, we are right now just registered today. We just got our, our file accepted to the SEC for a Reg A+. Plus. Mm, and, nice. Uh, yeah. Nice and stations. we're looking to uh, uplist next year to NASDAQ. So, yeah, it's just been a long road, man. But I came from zero to hero, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, it's a lifelong journey. It was a lot of a lot of hard work. It's a it's 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 amazing what what you've done, what you what you've built, and what you're building, and the the fact that the content you're creating is is a gift, meaning that mm -hmm. it gives back to to the people right. who take the time. That's that's my favorite kind of. It's the only kind of you know, content I have a stomach for anymore these days. Yeah. There's so much stuff on TV and it, the world is violent enough. I don't need to go watch shows about more violence and all that, but uh, yeah. I, I love what you're doing. And, you know, I, I was always curious, you, entrepreneurs, you know, they tend to get more corporate and cutthroat as they go. And, yeah. and, and you at, at some point, you know, you, you started to learn some of the esoteric mysteries and started to study ancient civilizations and you got really really adept at it and yeah. um and and you made a choice which i always like i'm you know I, I another reason i have such admiration for you is you know the what you're doing is not the easiest way for someone who's who's a business savvy to 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 make money period i mean you know you're kind of going against the mainstream um, and, and you're not going to get the kind of corporate money thrown at you no. that, you know, a different kind of content would, but yet you made that decision. And I'm wondering at what point you, you realized, you know, the, what, what changed or that you saw the, the importance mm -hmm. of that kind of, was there anything in particular that you, that you just fell in love with? Like, what was it? 
Well, the you know, for so for decades, I had already been studying and researching um, technologies and esoteric topics, and uh, even had kind of began traveling the world a little. And I realized that I, my main purpose in life was to bring this knowledge to the world. And I had been sitting around for 20 years with all this stuff in my head with nobody to talk to. I remember thinking, you know, I, I, uh, remembering about the, um, the prophecy I read about the Hopi, talking mm -hmm. about the web that will connect everything in the entire world. And uh, in the future, people will be connected by this giant web and you know, all the information will be passed to and fro. And I remember thinking back in the late 80s, when that happens, then I'll be able to share my information. So I've been sitting back just literally waiting for this moment wow. in time to occur in my lifetime where we have the World Wide Web, which I didn't hear about it ever again after I read that prophecy till 1998. That's right. On a TV commercial. And I said, here we go. Mm. And so I started my first company was dot com marketing, not my first company, but my first Internet company was dot com marketing group. And that company uh, was primarily building websites and nobody had a website yet. So it was right again, perfect right. timing. I would just call from the yellow pages, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, I telemarket my own people, mm -hmm. you know, my own list, and then make my own appointments, go out on them Thursday and Friday, sell them, collect the money, Saturday and Sunday, make the websites and start all over again wow. on Monday. And I would just specialize in like mortgage companies or finance companies, something that was, I can use a template, change the colors and the names around, change some mm -hmm. of the product percentages around, nothing too crazy. And I can pop them out like this because I had a cookie cutter set up already. So I would just target all, the, all those companies, mm. no, no product SKUs to deal with or nothing like that. Just real simple. And uh, eventually I had a few other businesses as well. And I just realized about around 2010, I was just like, man, I don't know how much longer I can yeah. just focus just on making money from, from being in business as, as an entrepreneur, which was great, but right. not being able to share all this stuff in my head with the world. And it finally culminated around 2013, almost into 2014, pretty close to 2014, uh, when I walked into a company that I was the president of. And at the time we were making about $200,000 a week in gross sales. Mm -hmm. And I walked in as four partners and I said to them, I'm done. Um, and I knew that, you know, I just, I just said, I, I have to, the only way to get this is to cut it right there. Yeah. So I, I cut it. I said, you guys can take my share of the company. I don't want to sell my share. I don't want to take any money from the company. I don't want to put a burden. I'll help and train or anybody who doesn't know what to do. I'll, I'll do that. But I, I need to walk away. I have to fulfill my purpose on this planet. And then I walked out. Wow. <laughs> I just literally walked out from and started from zero and really didn't take any money or anything like that. Just continued to build and reinvest everything back into what I was trying to do and develop mm -hmm. over time. I had a long-term game plan already set up for when I would get to this point that I am today. Um, and it's, just, it's worked out, you know. And even today still, I haven't even taken a real salary from Forbidden Knowledge mm. uh, since its inception. I don't really take home a paycheck. Like everybody in the company who works for the company, they all get paid. But I'm waiting for probably somewhere in 2023 to start taking a paycheck. Yeah. Uh, you know, but you just I've building and reinvesting, right? It, just reinvesting, man. Just reinvesting. But fortunately man. for me, I'm able to do, I'm able to play on the stock market. I'm able to, you know, play in the crypto market and mm -hmm. all these other things that I'm able to do. I have a lot of, uh, you know, referral business that I give out that generates mm -hmm. a lot of revenue for me. So I'm able to make money still, a, de yeah. a very decent income. Uh, but uh, it, it's been a long term coming, but it all comes down to, the passion. I wanted to follow my passion. And now that I'm following my passion wholeheartedly, money is just an energy exchange of that passion. It just shows up in your bank account. And as long as I'm living in my passion and focusing on building my legacy for my family, my current day, current abundance daily is guaranteed. That That's exactly how I think too, man. I look at my kids and yeah. I'm grateful and I teach them every day. And But mm -hmm. as far as abundance goes, you know, I'm I got, I got them and I'm, I'm, I'm rich. I'm, I'm as rich as I can be, you know, I, and I feel that in my heart and, and yeah. I know that it's going to show up more in my life. And it does. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's amazing when you understand how the law of attraction, the law of manifestation, yeah. the law of resonance, whatever you want to call it, you know, how, mm -hmm. how, how it works and how it yeah. can work for you. And I, and we're going to talk about, I know you got uh, something coming up and you do a lot with that as well. We're going to get into that, but before mm -hmm. we do, you know, so the Emerald Tablets, my friend. I, I so I'm going to be honest. You know, I I love these. I love these teachings, but I never, 
I never got into the Emerald tablets. I, I mm. learned a little bit about them. And, but when I started reading your book, yeah. you know, and I started reading about the, the history of the Emerald tablets and, and Toth and, and mm. I, it was, it, first of all, it's a fantastic book for anyone who's interested Thank in you. learning about the Emerald tablets. Billy breaks it down in, in a very easily understandable way. You know, mm. he takes a lot of the, the, he takes the, the most accepted translation of the tablets and really uh, brings forth a lot of knowledge and insight about about all of it and how it relates and it relates in so many in so many ways to so many but how did you what what I what I'm curious about the two yeah. things how did you become so like you know I mean you probably could have taken your you know your ability to break down things to just about any anything but you chose mm -hmm. the emerald tablets you chose yeah. toth which I right. think is is so telling. You know what 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 drew you to the tablets? I'm right. Well, I was just doing a lot of esoteric research and studying and researching ancient civilizations when I came across the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, which is a text that's supposed to be around thirty six thousand, maybe even thirty eight thousand years old. And I saw it once. I saw it a second time. It came up again. I said, "Let me check this out." So I actually downloaded an online PDF and started reading it from there originally. I said, man, this is pretty interesting. I see a lot of stuff in here that mm. I don't hear anybody else talking about, but it's powerful. And I see all the correlations and connections to a lot of things we have going on today within religion and spirituality and even science. And so I decided to order it. So I ordered a copy of the actual translated tablets. And then I started talking to people about it and people in, in the community, in the conscious community, leaders, they, they were like, oh yeah, well, I've, you know, I've, I've kind of read them. Some had read all, some had read some. And they all, I've, well, you know, what do you think about them? And they all pretty much talked only about the esoteric side a little bit and uh, some of the spirituality, but they didn't see the deeper connections. They didn't see the connections to the world we're living in now either. So I said, wow, I need to make a compendium of this book, which is a breaking down of the information and the wisdom and the knowledge and making it explainable in a way that the average person can understand it. Because I saw so much when I read these tablets. For me, when I analyzed ancient texts, it's like things pop right out at me that the average person, for whatever reason, just doesn't see. And so I'm able to uh, see things and make connections with things that are that appear to be totally unrelated. But when you go to the timeline, it matches up perfectly. So it's been one of my greatest gifts and talents is my ability to see into the deeper meanings, you know, finding the multidimensional meanings and the structure behind what's being said and also finding the science that matches what's being said. And uh, so, yeah. so far it's been, it's been an amazing blessing. And that book is, is uh, it's been a bestseller now for four years on Amazon. It's a fantastic book. I know exactly what you mean. You know, the, yeah. the more knowledge you come into, the easier it is to connect the dots. And I yeah. mean, across the board, things don't, things don't seem random anymore. And, you know, you mm -hmm. find yourself ex having to explain <laughs> to <laughs> to others a lot about what you know how and and starts to be be a bigger question of how is it that no one else can see how this is clearly related mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. that's why you, i feel like that's why we come into the knowledge that we do so that we can help others make the connection um right yeah uh but so that, that's the, the thrice born toth i saw so you know and i know you talk about this too i saw so much so many um echoes of the teachings of of jesus jesus and or i almost called him yeshua yeah. um same same person but uh you know and like one of the books one of the quotes from the book is uh and toth said far in the past time when atlantis first grew as a power appeared there one with the key of wisdom showing the way of light to all showed he to all men the path of attainment way of the light that flows among men mastering darkness leading the man's soul upward to heights that were one with the light and i'm like so is he but he came before jesus but i yeah. feel like jesus <laughs> you know i feel like there's 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 a relation there's a literal lineage yeah. there you know mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts I, I know you talk about this too yeah well in my opinion jesus which is a real his real name is yeshua uh, is actually either Thoth himself that found a way to come back through a womb, because this guy does some really experimental stuff with transferring his mind into other bodies, or Jesus, Yeshua, was an actual uh, adept initiate of the ancient Egyptian mystery schools 
uh, which if you read a, a, a little known gospel called the Gospel of the Holy Twelve, which was kept out of the canonized Bible, it talks about where Yeshua disappeared to at the age of 12. Mm -hmm. He actually went to Egypt to study the Egyptian mysteries. Then he went to Tibet to learn Qigong and Reiki. And then he went to India to learn the mystic arts. And he taught reincarnation all the way back down into Egypt. And then the Bible picks up where it says, I called my son out of Egypt. And now he shows up riding on the back of a donkey in Jerusalem again uh, at the age of 32, I believe. But, mm -hmm. but this text is, you know, it's telling because it shows you that he went to learn the Egyptian mysteries. And what is the original teachings or the original teacher of the Egyptian mysteries? It was both the Atlantean. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus's words or his quotes of his words in the New Testament almost match identically to what Thoth is saying in the Emerald Tablets. However, you know, that was 36,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. So you have to say, wow, this guy is, is uh, he's regurgitating what he learned, or he is this, this entity. Yeah. One of the, one of the other, you yeah. know, and there's, there's, there's more than one, uh, call it a gospel, call it a text that mm -hmm. didn't make it into the final version of uh, mostly propaganda i call it but uh, that you know there's a lot of text that yeah. talk about jesus learning in the ancient mystery schools mm -hmm. uh, um and and actually mary magdalene and jesus's mother were also learned in different uh sects of the school that's right different parts of the school and mm -hmm. this is this is backed up by a lot of uh texts that that didn't weren't allowed into the final copy for lots of reasons yeah, right you know. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely the, all the apocrypha text was kept out that's that's right I, yeah. it's so i mean all the good i feel like all the good stuff was, mm -hmm. was the important stuff was kept out and you know for a lot of reasons that's a whole nother podcast but <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you know so this it's it's, it's amazing there's a lot of great great books that you can look into uh if you're interested in reading more about um some of you know then people will ask all the time do, do jesus didn't have a wife i'm like every everybody had a it was accepted that they had wives you know what i'm saying yeah. like mary magdalene is the one who washed the body that's right How, yeah. why, why would that makes no <laughs> sense i mean they imagine that <laughs> yeah well you know they found the gospel of jesus's wife in uh in that region that's right and it's now in the harvard seminary actually in america it's in harvard seminary so you if anyone wants to go study it or look it up it's right there he obviously had a wife most likely had kids and that would mm -hmm. be the merovingian bloodline which is probably still walking the planet till this very day mm -hmm. yeah yeah it was just there's probably a lot of people who claim that bloodline i don't know how many people actually are but uh right <laughs> yeah um some people are using that bloodline to do some heinous shit and yes um unfortunately a lot of the those bloodlines are being monopolized yeah. by bastards <laughs> yeah it's all been twisted they've taken the egyptian mysteries which was taught on teaching man how to reach how to reach the light and become a golden age civilization and then they've turned it into these uh, uh these dark entities or these dark societies these secret societies like skull and crossbones that's, yeah. that originates from mystery schools um, Illuminati originates from mystery yeah. schools, all of them. So you can just go down the list. It's like 30 or 40 of these secret societies and they all originate from mystery schools, but that, you know, the leaders of those schools have long gone. And now mm -hmm. the people who had taken the knowledge, they go, Hmm, you know what? If we use this same exact force and this understanding of wisdom, we can twist it and we can use it for darkness. We can actually monopolize. We can take That's over. Nice. We can dominate. The masses and so that's what's turned into unfortunately that is what it's turned into unfortunately yeah. and you know we're on, we're on a bit of a timetable um hopefully enough people wake up uh and stop complying yeah because <laughs> right. that's all it will take yeah. and then it all then the whole cookie crumbles i keep telling people there doesn't need to be uh the revolution will be in consciousness and understanding yeah. if no exactly. one needs to lift a finger they just need to say no thanks that's it not anymore it's so simple you know yeah. um it'd be the most peaceful revolution ever if, mm -hmm. if people just get the knowledge they need to, to understand and connect the dots yeah. so they know what's been happening and it's a big it's a big ugly web you know it's a big amount of betrayal so naturally yeah. it's hard for most people to comprehend let alone believe yeah. but it, it's there nonetheless uh mm -hmm. you know i 
I was I've been learning a lot about Atlantis and Atlanteans and Lemuria and I I I feel like and also you know learning more about what what went on right before World War II popped off in Antarctica and some of these subterranean yeah. uh, races that that had some of this advanced understanding of technology that. Yeah that then came out and, you know, helped and shepherded the Germans kind of, um, mm -hmm. and gave them a way to sur survive without winning the war, you know? Right. Um, and, and I'm starting to, to think and realize that that was probably those same dark entities that caused the, the, the great fall, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the collapse of Atlantis and Lemuria yeah. and how, you know, there's a lot of evidence and and writings that talk about this war that went mm -hmm. on, yeah. and it seems more and more to me like I at first when I first I learned about it, I was like, really, you know, a war? Uh, like, yeah. uh, uh, could they have been as dumb as we are now? You know, but <laughs> I I feel like it, it maybe it came to that because you have some of these same forces and ideologies which are totalitarian. And, yeah. and fascist to the core, you mm -hmm. know, attempting to shape the world in a lot of the same way that that I'm learning went on 10,000 years ago. Right. And, and I'm wondering what your thoughts about that are, you know, about Lemuria and, and Atlantis and what was going on with that with that conflict. When you go back to the Animal Tablets again, Tho talks and warns about the Dark Brothers. And these Dark Brothers have been around for eons permeating civilization after civilization after civilization, walking amongst men, but unlike men, and pulling the strings in the background like master puppeteers. Uh, and these, these are the same people that you just referenced, the ones that worked with Hitler and helped Hitler with that whole thing that he did down there in Antarctica and everything else. Um, these people are still here of walking the planet till this very day, behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. There's always these laws and these rules and these uh, situations that really destroy any type of semblance of humanity on this planet. But these people who do, who do this, they operate from behind the scenes and you see only the puppets in the front. Mm -hmm. You see the politricksters, you know, you see the presidents and this and that and, and, and the world leaders. Those people aren't really truthfully the ones in pure no. power. They have the illusion of having power, but they really don't have any power. I mean, even the president of the United States That's can't make mean. rules that would affect the state no. of Florida. The governor just says, no, we don't want to do that. We'll do what we want to do. Right. <laughs> that, I mean, I mean if, even more. I mean, <laughs> very, very limited. Uh, the, 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 the the true change that, that they can affect, even yeah. with the way the laws have been twisted and turned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, but behind the scenes at the highest level, there are the Dark Brothers. And we're talking about a very, very small group of people that are making all the rules and decisions, raising and collapsing economies, raising the price of commodities and crashing the price of commodities, controlling every up and down swing mm -hmm. all the way around the entire globe and eating off of all of it. Yep. Uh, and so, you know, that's what's really going on behind the scenes. So these, these dark brothers are still walking the planet till this very day. And the only power they have is the illusion of power because they don't have any power. That's right. We are, we are just as guilty for what's happening to us as them. And the reason why is because they're just sharks in the water that smell blood. A shark is going to smell blood and do what a shark does. That's I'm right. actually not mad at the shark. But doggone it, why are we jumping in the water where the blood is located, knowing that the shark is going to attack? At some point, we all as human beings have to look in the mirror and we have to point the finger back at ourselves and said, I allow this because how? My silence. I have an inclusion because I participate in all their systems. I believe in all their ideology and all their dogma. And I run with it and I teach it to my kids and they teach it to their kids without question. And so we're part and parcel in, uh, you know, in, responsible for what has been happening on the planet. And when people come to that epiphany, like, oh, man, we, we are really responsible mm -hmm. for what's happening it's, it's our fault for allowing it because the government's supposed to work for us and we got them we got they think that we think totally that we twisted. work for them it's the opposite like they really fooled us but they when got everyone people wake up that's when i think it's going to be but that's what's going on so lemuria was real atlantis was real there was a real golden age on the planet I just that was just one of the golden ages lemuria and atlantis were two separate golden ages that on two different areas of the planet even though Lemuria, Lemuria was more in the Pacific, Atlantis was in the Atlantic, right. Atlantis within the Atlantic Ocean. But the war, it started because of 
this um, hatred and jealousy. Um, you married this kind of woman and, and you got these kind of riches and I want more control over this part of the planet. That ring city of Atlantis was just one capital. Mm-hmm. It wasn't Atlantis. Atlantis was the whole planet. Earth was Atlantis. Everyone is sitting on top of Atlantis right now, wherever you are. It's just that one of the capitals was the Ring City, which was one of the most beautiful of the capitals. But there were capitals all over the planet, Mm -hmm. Otslan and all these other places. All these places were all capitals. And so these beings, they started going to war against each other, using human beings as cattle to fight these crazy wars. And you can find a lot of these wars in the book of Deuteronomy in the Bible, in the Old Testament of the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy literally lays out a lot of these wars that are being issued by these gods. And I do mm-hmm. mean gods with an S because these people, whoever translated the Bible, they by accident on purpose didn't realize that they put God singular when all the translations, if you go back to the original text, say mm-hmm. gods with an S. They took the S off the end to give you the illusion of monotheism. Right. They did. Uh, that's not all they did. <laughs> but, I did yeah. a lot more than that. I did, I did <laughs> but a yeah, remix. That, <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of ancient texts, you know, that that speak of of these battles and these war and oh, wars. Yeah. And some of the technology. I mean, you can go all the way back. You know, some of the oldest surviving texts that mm-hmm. speak of them. Tens um, of thousands of years. You can go look at the Enumi Elish, the Epic of Atrasis, the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Code of Hammurabi, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita. The Indian Vedas. I mean, I can just keep going. You go right. through these texts and all of a sudden you're like, war, war, war. Yeah. They even have WMDs. It actually says that in some of this text. No shit. I'm like, oh my God, we're just repeating everything that was already done. <laughs> it's, it's what it seems like. And, 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 you know, it's like, so, and I was talking to Michael Cremo. I'm, yeah. I'm sure you've, you've heard and read his, oh, yeah. his book, you know, Great and man. he, amazing amazing guy so full of wisdom um mm-hmm. but he was saying you know he was like why would they all be writing about this great conflict if there if it didn't happen what why, right. what what is it it's all symbology you're talking about different cultures at different times he's like it doesn't yeah. make any sense i knew that there was more and yeah. he's and he's so right and it becomes so obvious when you start mm-hmm. to connect the dots yeah but you know we're not exposed to these things we're not taught these things in school we're taught mm-hmm fake history and and a lot of yeah. other stuff that's probably not as important as some of these yeah. ancient lessons oh, yeah. that we could be learning from um oh for sure yeah it's amazing you know i i, I heard you talking about speaking of something that's a little more um relevant to what's happening but yet also has to do with ancient knowledge is mm-hmm. you talked about um this dwarf star which is a companion to our sun that they're just starting to really learn about and how mm-hmm. that might actually be, you know, causing some of the more sporadic um, issues that we're having with our weather and climate. Right. And, you know, obviously we have, a, we have a, the, the same people we've been referring to who are, and have planned on using whatever is going on with the climate. I mean, they got it down to an art, these, these guys, you know, whatever happens, <laughs> that's why it went from, global cooling to global yeah. warming right. to the ozone to now just just stick with climate change because that's climate a constant that's <laughs> climate that's it. Um, now and it's I, climate change. I mean it's it's they're it's brilliant the way that yeah. they continue to cover their their asses um mm-hmm. and consolidate and centralize power because that's mm-hmm. what it's all about yeah. you know i always tell people i'm like listen we're destroying the planet in a thousand ways okay yeah. climate change is is a result of the pe- the way that the planet is being destroyed it's just a name you know but the corporations that are pushing climate change are the ones destroying the planet so we have a conflict of interest here (laughs) you know i mean let's be let's be honest and they're campaigning and propagandizing people into Mm -hmm. feeling guilty about it yes you You guys are the ones that are doing this not us so, so we have, we all have to do our part and uh, take care of our carbon footprint. I'm like, no, you take care of your carbon footprint, dude. Tell them to stop using plastics. How about that? Right. For starters, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. They're affecting everything. I, I mean, know. just the plastics alone are affecting. Know. You know why they won't stop using plastics? Because would... every piece of plastic has petroleum in it. That's right. And so the oil companies, these big oil guys, they don't want to see plastic go away because plastic is made with oil. And if oil go, if they're, you know, that means they're going to lose the money on their commodities and all their futures. 
So they don't want to see that the futures take a dump. So they don't want to see plastics go away. So that's why we have everything wrapped in plastic, plastic, plastic. Your car, all the most of the pieces on the interior of your car, plastic. You know, there's your, your laptop case, plastic, right? The, 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 the thing around your TV that you're looking at me on right now, pla- all this stuff is made from oil. And so even though they're not selling as much gas now with these electric cars coming out, they're still uh, profiting huge off of oil and even electric cars. They're all using oil because when you plug it in, it comes from a powerhouse down the street that uses gas to twice, send the electricity. like tw- almost 10 times as much. It's, 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 it's actually worse. Electric cars. That's a whole thing. I got to talk. It's a whole nother. I just did a video on why well, I, I actually reposted a, a, a short of that summed it up yeah. in a minute. I'm like, right. hello, you know, <laughs> it's bad. First man. of all, electric cars are older than gasoline cars. You know yeah. what I mean? They had them first. They decided yeah. it was more profitable to go with the gasoline cars, so they mm-hmm. got they got rid of the electric cars. But yeah. you could see them lined up the, the, the old Ford electric cars right next to the Model oh, yeah. Ts. Mm-hmm. People are just they don't. If you don't know your history, man, yeah, yeah. doomed to repeat it. But um, but but tell me about this dwarf star that's the companion to our sun. You know, I was yeah. fascinated when I heard you talk about that. Yeah, so there's a dark star out there, and it's uh, you can call it a brown dwarf a dwarf star, a brown dwarf, or sometimes they call them a red dwarf. There's various different names for these stars. They're they're dark stars because why? You can't see them with the naked eye. You have to look in a, um, I love looking on Worldwide Telescope, Mm -hmm. and I go into, go to worldwidetelescope.org, go into two mass infrared mode in sky mode, and then start looking around our local area and you'll start to see little red dots. When you zoom into those red dots, you find out that those are actually stars. They're brown dwarfs or red dwarfs. But they call them dark stars because you can only see them in two mass infrared mode mm. with your telescope system. And uh, these things are far less, to, uh, uh, far smaller than the size of our yellow, or really our sun is actually white. It's not yellow, yeah. but it's far smaller. It just has the illusion of being yellow because the light scatter. But, they, but the mass, the mass of these dwarf stars is almost the same as our current sun. No shit. And what's crazy, yeah, so they're, they're very heavy. The gravity wells that they create in space are humongous. And then they orbit, you know, stars. So we discovered that we live in a binary star system. And what's really got me ticked off is like a company like Lead Story, who, who, who gets paid to troll on social media accounts, mm-hmm flagged my post where I was talking about this. Oh. I sent them all the science. I sent them an astronomer that was on mainstream news actually making the statement that we have two solar systems. We have our solar system and there's one more solar system orbiting our sun inside the inner Oort cloud region, which means there's two suns right. and they orbit each other. They, they teach this in astrophysics now in universities. It's all been changed. And so, um, you know, we're in a situation here where they discovered that most stars are either uh, binary, binary or yeah. trinary. That st- solar systems with only one star are very, very rare. Very rare. That's right. Extremely rare. Right. So we're in a binary star system, except our other sun is not a gigantic white sun. It's this brown dwarf, which is probably uh, maybe a quarter the size, but has the same amount of mass, gravitational mass. And those those energy waves, those gravitational waves, they ripple out, but they hit planets and moons and they cause friction, Mm -hmm. tidal bending and everything else, warping of the planet, warping of the moon. And they uh, and they create friction. That friction generates heat. And that's where a lot of heat comes from. If you look at the ice core samples, that's what I was saying when I was in Egypt teaching this in front of the Sphinx. I was standing right by the Sphinx's paw telling the whole 70 people Mm -hmm. that I brought to Egypt with me about this. If you look at the ice core data, and I had an archaeologist standing right there with me uh, who, uh, who teaches archaeology at a university, that these samples show, show you the cooling and warming periods over thousands of years, and it's a cycle. It's mm-hmm. a cycle that was happening before human beings hit the industrial age, mm-hmm. and it's going to continue to happen after we're gone. And it's all based on these alignments of the binary star system, other moon and planetary alignments. There's these periods of warming and cooling on Earth. They labeled it climate change, and they now they own that name, and they can make money on it when it's cold or hot. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> they know how to back both both horses. You know, they yeah. don't. They, they got the system down. Mm-hmm. Pat, it, you know, it's funny. I heard David Ike say a few years ago. He was like, "How the hell can you talk about global warming without 
without talking about the sun. No one mentions the sun. He was like, obviously you're leaving out a key component. And I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ, he's so right. You know what I mean? How yeah. do you, how do you talk about the temperature of a planet without ever including its sun? No one, Never. it's insane. Never. It's they don't literally talk about the solar maximum, the solar minimums that happen in cycles. Okay. They don't talk about that. Yeah. And then cooling periods, uh, you know, create warmer periods and warming periods create cooler mm, periods. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they had to get rid of the whole gl gl global warming, global cooling yeah. and just go with climate change. It was oh, it's a safer change. term. <laughs> <laughs> My God. And, yeah. and, you know, just the, the fact that the fact that they're going to, they're, you know, they're going to, they're going to try to start, you know, dogmatically, um, you know, kind of making it the next religion. Yeah. Uh, the way people talk about it so they can get rid of these quote deniers, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's, it's, it, I just hope enough people are, you know, uh, awake enough to say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Am amazing. The people just need to know basic. If they just understood some basic uh, geology and basic sciences, they would say, you guys are full of it, man. You know, Mm -hmm. But it's getting people to take time from having to worry about working and paying bills and taking care of their kids and all the stresses of life to focus on learning this stuff, which would only take them a couple of months. Yeah. Uh, and then they'd be like, wait a minute, guys, you really, you know, I mean. It, and you know, that's so. why they keep they that's why they do what they do to the economy, to, with the wars. Yeah. Because they, they don't want people to have that kind of time. And when things yeah. are flourishing. Mm -hmm. It's trouble for them, you know. Yep. I mean, it, it gives people time to mm -hmm. really start to imagine and create and come into more knowledge. And yeah, so uh oh, you know, what do we got to do? Oh, okay, mm -hmm. um, housing bubble. Put forth right. the housing bubble. Execute. <laughs> yeah. Plan housing bubble crash. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> how do you? I mean, it's like somebody made yeah. a great analogy. I heard the other day. It was like, if you grow oranges for mm -hmm. a, a, a living and you yeah. put those oranges in a basket if all of a sudden you put enough oranges for a whole year in a basket and all of them are rotten don't you mm -hmm. think you'd know about it Be like, right <laughs> yeah yeah actually it makes a lot of sense you would yeah. you know if people are like oh my god no one saw it coming well that one guy he saw it coming they, they, what do you mean they still of course they saw it coming. They made it happen. They, 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 they it set happen. it up, you know. They set it up and then Obama gave all the bankers the payoff money. That's right. He all rewarded the money went them. them. <laughs> Nothing went to the people. Nothing. Said, wow. This and, is wild. And, and then when people raised hell about the CEOs still getting their bonuses, well, they, yeah. just, they just quietly switched it around and added it to the salaries. You know, mm -hmm. it's just you just can't. Yeah. It, too big to fail. That's what that's that's what America has has shown yeah. over and over. And that's mm -hmm. the, the the government and the corruption that has happened has come from mm -hmm. this intermingling uh, of no one wants to take any responsibility for a yep. system when it fails. So yep. they just continue to bail each other out, and then they're in yep. business together. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what they're doing in Ukraine. They're they're, bu they're basically oh. buying Ukraine. Yeah, that's all you know? they're doing. That's all they're doing. Buying it up and bit by bit, billion by billion. That's right. <laughs> Literally, Russia's going like, to have Why are we sending all this money to Ukraine? I'm like, it's a business deal. Don't you understand what's going on here? That's right. Same thing they did with with Germany. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, people don't realize the same bankers who wrote the Treaty of Versailles mm -hmm. and said, "Oh, Germany has to pay." I think in today's dollars would be like ninety billion dollars. People are like, yeah. "How are they going to pay that?" They're never going to pay that. Right. We're gonna, they're going to. They turn around and lend them the money. Yeah, they turned right around and lent them the money and started building their economy back up. Yeah, six years later, Germany was the second largest economy in the world. People were like, "Oh my God, they're making all their payments. They're doing great." Yeah, mm -hmm. well, they yeah. Start, created a monster with that. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but people don't people don't know the history has been quietly lost. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely not going to teach it to you in school. <laughs> no, no, that's yeah. right. I tell my 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 boys are young still; they're nine and eleven, but. I'm always like, what did what did they try to teach her today? Let me tell you what really happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm gonna tell them. Yeah. But um, you know, man, I, I saw I'm I'm a big fan of Dr. Stephen Greer. Um, mm -hmm. and uh I, I I really I'm so glad that you were the one to sit down with him and mm -hmm. and uh help yeah. bring his, his information forward. And I and yeah. I you know, I see that information starting to kind of uh trickle its way into the consciousness community more and more yeah which, which 
warms my heart because people need to also be aware of, you know, the next false flag, God willing, um, you know, mm -hmm. it's offset by what, you know, the disclosure, the true disclosure that's happening. Yeah. Um, but you know, I was wondering what, how is your, your time shooting that with Dr. Greer and, and, uh, you know, it seems like you, like you, you, you were, you learned a lot from him and, uh, mm -hmm. and I, I just was so delighted to see you two together because I have such yeah. a respect and admiration for both of you. Oh, thank uh, you. How yeah. was your time with him? And did you, were, were, did you know a lot of what he was saying or did you learn a lot from, from, I learned quite, it was a little bit of both. I learned a lot of new stuff that I never heard him say before. Uh, now, I had seen Dr. Greer uh, in the original Disclosure, which aired on the Press Club, That's which right. we actually aired on, I think it was CNN, in the middle of the day in like 2010. I see all these military officers and these retired, you know, nuclear physicists and nuclear arm, mm -hmm. arms guard. And I'm like, these guys have hard jobs. Like, those jobs are the hardest jobs to get in the world. So I said, let me pay attention to what this guy is saying. This guy said he was he had the codes to the nukes. I said, I got to listen to this. So I'm listening to this. And I think it was like almost three hours. It was a long thing. It was. Yeah. And, uh, and, and this guy, and you know, Stephen Greer is the one who set this all up. And I'm like, who the heck is this guy? How did he get these people to put their lives on the line to come forward and speak on this, you know, UFOs coming to missile silos and shutting down the nukes and these guys having to go reactivate nukes. And yeah. And I'm like, wow. So I started following him from back then a uh, little by little and then, uh, you know, Gaia had gave me the call and I said, look, we'd like to uh, have you interview with um, interview Stephen Greer and yeah. show about all this information and all the years of stuff that he's gone through and all the disclosure that he's brought forward. Uh, they had asked quite a few people before me, but he was rejecting everyone. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Cool. Yeah. yeah. He was like, no, no, I don't like that. He's like very, very, he's very particular. Uh, he's very particular. Yeah. Yeah. That's and awesome. uh, and so it was pretty cool. He he actually, uh, you know, we had a, a conversation on the phone and then we actually agreed to do a podcast on my podcast platform first. So we did a podcast on Forbidden Knowledge TV and we hit it off. We were great. Mm -hmm. became very, you know, the rapport was instant. And then it just set up everything for me being able to go out there and, and interview him. And the way that I understand him and, and watch his interviews, he doesn't like to have his thought cut off. Like if he's speaking and you cut him off and try to, you know, interject and come with your own idea or bring in another question, he gets extremely frustrated. So I knew that my job was pretty, pretty much to just ask the question. If I have an opportunity to interject something, do that. But for the most part, let him speak. Let him say what he wants to say. And so that's what I made. I made it a very serious, you know, if you can see my face, a very serious interview. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I just wanted to keep it serious because I thought he felt like his information was world changing. Yeah. And I didn't want to make light of it. I didn't want to inject any laughter or any jokes into it. I just kept it boom and let him put his information out. He really appreciated that. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell. And it was a very successful program. And I, I, I mean, I know a lot of the information and I've been following yeah. that, but I still enjoyed every minute of it and, and yeah. hearing him, you know, get, give it from a new perspective. And, mm -hmm. and he's making a lot of progress. You know, I know that he's, he's constantly in Washington these days, you know, yeah. and had a lot to do with some of the, some of the recent laws that were changed in February that protect mm -hmm. whistleblowers coming out of these black ops programs. That's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how much protection, I mean, it's, it seems to be working to some degree because I know last I, I heard from him, um, he said that, you know, they're getting new whistleblowers almost every week since mm -hmm. that law was changed. Wow. And he was preaching that law, before it was, you know, he was like, if you worked for an illegal, you know, black ops off the record, unconstitutional program, then you're not at, at you don't have to adhere to an NDA, mm -hmm. you know, and if you come forward, we'll try and protect you. People yeah. are like, uh, -uh. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> naturally, but, uh, yeah. but it's a, it's a God, you know, he's making good progress. I hope that um, he continues to, yeah, and um, they continue to roll out at least a little bit more of the truth instead of this, you know, it's like you start lying and then you can't stop. That's right. And that's, that's what's problem. going on. Yeah, they, They've told so many lies over so many decades. Like there's no way to put a, it's, it's like, you know, the bandages are bleeding, leaking blood from everywhere. There's no way to, so they just keep trying to put more bandages on top of the bandages. 
we need someone or not someone we need a group to eventually come up and say look this is it we're now yeah. going to just say look we've made some major mistakes how we handled this whole disclosure of knowledge and information we've suppressed it we've oppressed it we've gotten rid of people yeah. and we're not proud of that you know kind of like how they apologize for the syphilis experiments or the ski right. syphilis experiments some of these other horrible horrible things that they've done just come out and say look man we screwed up we need to make a change we can't tell you everything because that would be a threat to national security maybe even global security but we can give you a little bit more than what we've been giving you and yeah. we can give you enough to let you know that yes this is real yes we are not alone in the universe and yes, we're trying to figure out how to work with these people or these beings or coordinate or negotiate or right. whatever. Something would be better than what they're doing now. Anything. And I and I keep I, the more I learn, the more I, I I'm positive that the biggest what has always been the, 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 the stopper of that is the fact that. If people realize that we've been sitting on free energy technology since the 50s you know maybe mm -hmm. even before but but oh, yeah. truly you know ma coming into mastery of it mm -hmm. since the 50s yeah and they realize that all this energy all these crises all this all this oil all this gouging all the wars you know that have gone on yeah <laughs> have have been truly out of just greed you know just greed, greed and consolidation of power yeah. that I, I, you know, I think that it's the same people that said, "Uh, uh, you know, you this this is the this is the number one secret that right. that you have to keep above <laughs> all other secrets." Yeah, because the 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 monopolies would topple, and mm -hmm. the more I learn, the more I'm convinced that that is still holding true just yet. Yeah. You know, I I think that they they can forecast that they can't hold the, the dam together much longer because yeah. you know, I mean, hackers, the information is just. Yeah. It's it's easier to come by than than ever, and so oh, yes. it, they're just you can't be spend your entire existence putting out fires, and that's what mm -hmm. I feel like they they got to be feel like they're they're doing anyway. But I, I hope, man, it's got to it's got to change soon. Yeah, one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely change because look, no empire persists forever. Look back in history books. I mean, look at Rome. Rome went; they were ruling everything. They went down. Egypt yeah. was at the pinnacle at one point. They went down. Everybody goes down. I mean, Egypt was overthrown seven times. So, you know, right now, America is the new Rome, but even Rome won't, won't persist. This version of it won't persist forever. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be a cycle of change, and uh, this cycle of change will eventually come in which the way that even the economy is set up right now won't exist anymore. No, it can't. <laughs> Ponzi scheme can, can only last yeah. so long. Right. <laughs> You know, I mean, that's so long, man. I mean, it's running out. You know, they keep printing and printing and printing. My God. You know, and I tell my kids, I was like, if we did that, we get arrested. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Look at this guy, this bankman guy from the uh, crypto oh my TX. God. He's doing the same thing the government's doing. He did, you know, nothing different there. That's right. He should have, he should have known he was getting, getting set up. Yeah. I mean, talk about wet behind the ears. I don't know what he oh, was man. thinking. Listen, wow. He got Patsy written on his forehead. <laughs> yeah, you got to um, pay the vig, as they say in the old mafia. You got to pay the vig. If you don't, because you cut this guy out, that's mm, right. You might not make it too far. <laughs> that's very true. They give you a little bit. They dangle you all the way out there, and they go, "Whoop!" Let me snatch him right back. Yeah, and they do it. They, you know, there's, there's no one who they won't do that to. You know, what I mean, right. it's like in the end, everyone's expendable. They've shown that over and mm -hmm. over, and that's, that's right. sad but true. Because the, the 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 like you said. The true power is behind a closed door, you know, yeah. and, and that's the only ones they're truly concerned about. But I yeah. wanted to ask you, Jen, you know, David Icke gets a lot of, um, you know, he get. I mean, for the longest time, he was ridiculed because of his beliefs about this this interbreeding of of some of the, yeah. what I'm imagining is the Draco, you know, yeah. uh, bloodline, reptilian bloodline into um, the human bloodlines, mm -hmm. and. I mean, I always say I I, I don't I'm not sure I I'm definitely not close minded about it. I I haven't made up my mind one way or the other. I don't know if I'm yeah. as quite as convinced as David. Right. But they sure act reptilian. So what does what in the end? What's the difference? You know what I mean? They they yeah. seem blue blooded and cold blooded as as any human can possibly be. But I was wondering if you, you know, throughout your studies and what. what where, where do you fall on that? Do you believe that that they have been interbred, that they are reptilian, or, or is it more of a metaphysical 
relationship? I think, well, there's a couple of options, a couple of things that I think of when I, uh, theories that I think about. The first one is that, uh, you know, David, I, David Ike's theory could possibly be correct. You can't take that away because everything is so, so much crazy things have happened on this yeah. planet. I don't even know if that can be fake or real. So it's a possibility. But the other thing, if you look at a lot of the ancient texts, you discover that these Anunnaki beings, which hailed from different star systems, different planets, they weren't homo sapiens sapiens, but in some way they genetically interbreeded with us and making us all human beings part alien, part human. Uh, and so in my opinion, you know, we're, we're all aliens. We all have aliens in our DNA, alien DNA in our bodies, I should say. And because of that, we are all part of the lineage of people that came from the stars, whether they're reptilian mm-hmm. or whether they're, you know, uh, homo, homo something, but there's something. And, you know, homo sapien, sapien really didn't come out until about 200,000 years ago, right. but we were already on this planet. And they genetically modified the existing hominid. That's right. And they themselves appear to be obviously hominids of some type. Uh, so I think that the human form, this bilateral bipedal form, mm-hmm. it permeates the entire universe in various different types of races or another. But it all has general type shape, split mm-hmm. us in half. We have two equal sides, have hands that can manipulate the environment because you can't fly into space unless you can manipulate the environment, unless you have really, really strong mind power. Right. Uh, and so I believe that we're all all have alien DNA of some type in our body, every single one of us. You know, I mean, look at Absolutely. a whale or a dolphin. They're way smarter than a human being, but they Octopus. can't build a spaceship. Octopus. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, they, they would outwit us in 10 seconds. They're, they're 10. They're light years ahead of us, uh, but they can't build a spaceship. Right. Because they can't manipulate the environment like we can. So in a way, it's a benefit to them. But yeah. in a way, they should be the ones going into space, not us, because we're still trying to grow up. <laughs> we can build, we can go to space and hurt other people. That's right. Uh, you know, we have to grow up. The human being, has, human race has to grow up at some point. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was just trying to explain this to someone. I was like, you don't understand, you know, they don't let monkeys with guns take spaceships in, off into space and, and with no. g- thermonuclear weapons. You can't do that. You know, you don't, you don't become a space faring race yeah. until you are mature enough. You don't just like you don't get your driver's license until you're at least you 16 go. years old. You're mm-hmm. not allowed because you, you don't have the mindset, the capacity to be responsible. Yep. And that's where we're at right now. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it's, it, and and look what's going on on the planet. It's just like man, it's it it, it, it it's like we're we're on rerun. You know, yeah. all the same shit keeps happening, and that's the individual is a reflection of of the the greater society. And yeah. until we learn, it's going to keep happening. We have to start yeah. projecting a a better future. And speaking yeah. of of that, you know, I know that that one of the great things that you do is you know you help people understand the kind of mindset that would that will bring abundance into their mm-hmm. life and i know that you have a, you have a, a workshop coming up in january i think right yeah i have two workshops the first one is called blueprint for god power and that's going to be an eight hour workshop probably really it's going to be 10 hours because i've agreed to do an extra hour and so has my co-host dr b serious and he's talking more on the metaphysical side and i'm talking more on the spiritual and financial side so i'm bringing financial literacy spirituality and he's bringing metaphysics and together it's going to be a powerful 10 hours of, 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 of teaching. And then uh, that's what I think January the 7th, January 29th, I'm doing my fourth annual manifest destiny workshop. It's an online class. It's going to be nine hours total time of teaching. And it's going to be a mind blowing manifesting class. I'm bringing all new science, all new metaphysics, manifesting techniques. I'm going to have an interactive class with the people. I'm going to teach them how to manifest in real time right during the class. And uh, we're also going to bring in Elizabeth Hookshire, who's going to teach about mental health. And we have another specialist, licensed specialist, to come in and teach trauma relief. Because once a person has filled up their body with trauma over all the years of their life, they have no more space to learn how to manifest. They have no more space to, to do anything with their life. All they're focused on, their body is focused on all this trauma. So we reduce the trauma out of the body. And then from there, you can fill the body with abundance. You can fill your cells with what they need to be able to put your power, your energy out into the universe and create the reality you want. So we're going to be doing an amazing class. And both of those are available on eventbrite.com. And they just go to Eventbrite and type in Billy Carson. 
both of those workshops should pop right up. Man, I, I got goosebumps just listening to you because I know I know for a fact that is that is the recipe. Mm-hmm. You know, you can learn about, you can read Abraham until you're blue in the face. You can mm-hmm. you can study and learn, but when your body is riddled with trauma, you you mm-hmm. are gonna you're gonna create from a tr- a place of trauma. Exactly. And the things that show up in your life, they're gonna they're gonna reflect that kind that the stuff that don't lo- it doesn't belong anymore, right? Yep. And I. So to be able to do all of that and begin to heal and integrate, get rid of some of the trauma, that is the key. That is mm-hmm. the key. That's yeah. when things really start to, to yeah. change. That's my, been my experience. So that is a, what an amazing uh, workshop that's going to be for everyone. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to include a link in the description to that. If any, for anyone who's right. who wants to check it out, you'll be able to click right on it. Um and that's that sounds so great, Billy. That's that's the recipe, man. That's going to be that's fantastic. The that's the, Absolutely. And Elizabeth, Elizabeth's book is called "The Recipe to Elevated Consciousness." She's co-teaching this with me, and that book is a bestseller. And she's got the recipe to get the trauma out of the I body. I know she does. I talked to her. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. That that's incredible. Um, you know, I, I love I love asking this 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 question. Um, and, well, that, there's. I know that you don't have too much time left, so I'm I want, I'm I'm gonna cut it short. But I wanted to give you an opportunity. You know, um, you've come into great wisdom in your in your life, and and I always look at the humanity and this co-conscious creation that is being manifest. And mm-hmm. you know, you see a lot of people with their programs are glitched and bugged out, and yeah, <laughs> you know, the, they're they're bumping into things and things aren't going the way they're supposed to, and they don't realize this because the the programming is off, right? Mm-hmm. So what I like to do with my podcast and and you know kind of my my life these days is put some programming that is so, some core some source code back into mm-hmm. their lives gotcha. that can help them find their way. And mm-hmm. I, and I know that um that's a lot that encompasses a lot of what you're doing as well. And so I wanted to give you an opportunity to to share you know uh, something that you feel like maybe somebody needs to hear or they mm-hmm. could take with them that will help them find more joy and ease in this life. Sure. Well, the first thing that I think everyone needs to do is stop worrying about what other people think about you. That's the biggest reason for the, for the majority of the trauma and the issues that people are having today in their life. Stop focusing on what they're thinking about you. Stop focusing on begging for help from outside sources Stop focusing on hoping that somebody comes to do this and do that. Everything starts from the inside. Take time away and focus on the inside. Go to the inner self. Go to inner space. Work on your inner self. If you don't know how to do that, there's millions of self-help books. There's millions of self-help videos. There's millions of affirmation songs and affirmation tapes and videos Start focusing and spending time working on yourself. And once you start to fix yourself and stop worrying about all the noise out there, then all of a sudden, what you're building on the inside will manifest on the outside. Just like if you go to somebody's house and you see that your house is all in chaos and everything's a mess everywhere you look. That's what's going on inside their body. Their mind, their consciousness is in chaos. You're looking at the chaos that has filled all the way up and spilled out into their own environment. When you see if you can get things neat and clean and organized, when that person's thoughts are probably in most cases, not all cases, but in most cases, more organized. And so you want to be a person that has focused and worked on self, that removed as much chaos as possible from your mind so that you can then pour out into the world what you really want to pour out, which is light, power, uh, motivation, inspiration, help and assistance, service to others versus crying, begging, hoping, wishing, and everything else, all the Cursing, traumatic yeah. type of experiences, you know? <laughs> and if you do that, your life is going to flip around. It has to. That's the law. Yeah. That's, that is the law. Yeah. I, I love that. That is awesome to to share and, and so well put. Um, Billy, it's been, it's been fantastic, my friend. I know you, I know that, uh, you don't have much time. I so enjoyed this talk. I, I appreciate you. everything you're doing with with your work, and uh, it was you know it was great meeting you. I think it was yeah. a year ago now, um, yeah. but I'm sure I'll bump into you again, and maybe one day we do this again. 
And yeah. um, yeah, it's been real. Please give my 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 love to Elizabeth and the thank whole you, family. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for your time, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate you. Have a good one, man. Thanks, Billy. Take care. All right. Peace.